Welcome back to AndyTube. This video is called Taking a Spin and it's uh, part 11 of my series Coco Goes to the Spa. And taking a spin I'm going to try sewing on Coco uh, for the first time since I bought her. So we've uh, done some rehabilitation work, took off a few of the parts, degreased the whole machine, uh, all the parts, uh, reassembled, upgraded to our uh, new LED light, which reminds me, let me go get my sunglasses. Haha, <laughs> so, oh, it's a pretty white light, isn't it? Uh, so, Let's see, maybe I don't even need that other lamp. Maybe I'll try that. So anyway, I'm going to, I'm going to see. I've got her tension set. And, you know, I stuck a needle in there and turned the machine by hand and then ran it. And nothing was uh, hitting anything. So I figured uh, let's, let's try and sew with her. And uh, we'll see how it turns out. Let's see if I can get in here. A little tighter shot there. I guess I'm going to have to get that. Kind of a more yellow light. But anyway, let's let's see how uh, we turn out here and get set up. So uh, what I've got is just some lightweight muslin. Uh, muslin. And that's uh, good for testing. And I've got a red needle thread and a white bobbin thread. And I'm just going to go slow here in the beginning. I'll just do a number six uh, stitch. Okay, looks like, well I see a little red from the top down below, um, it's pretty lightweight muslin, let's see, I'm going to push in my tension dial up here and turn my thumb nut a little to the right. I'm sewing at about a tension of four. See if I can go at a little more normal speed this time. All right. Yeah, I'm, I'm okay with that tension. Let's see if I can go up to about 12 uh, stitches per inch. One thing that the 301 is known for is a beautiful top stitch. Yeah, it's pulling that. I don't think I have it either. I, I have to adjust my bobbin tension. See, I'm getting a little looping at that speed. Go to a four and a half here. Still showing a little top stitch, but I mean it's a beautiful stitch. It's just a little unbalanced where I'm picking up um, some of the needle thread down on the bottom. But it's a pretty lightweight, loose weave uh, muslin. So, what I'm thinking is, since I'm not having any stitching problems and the machine is operating properly, let's see if I went to uh, fold this muslin over and I went with four layers of it. And we'll see how our tension is looking then. 
about 10 stitches per inch. Whoops, started out with my with my take up lever down instead of up. Let's go some reverse here and see how that does. Okay. Come back. Go a little finer up around 20 stitches per inch here. And let's see how this is going to look here. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Still not crazy about that tension. The bobbin, when I put the bobbin thread in and checked the tension, it seemed a little stiff uh, to me. Like there was a little bit of tension on the, a little too much tension on the bobbin. Let me uh, back out here a little bit. And let me just. Put the foot down so I have tension and pull on this needle thread up here on the take up lever. Yeah, that seems a little bit light. I got it on about four. So, let me uh, push that indicator dial in and Bring it around. I thought I had it set pretty good, but then I remember we were, or me, we, I was playing with it a little bit at the end there, showing you how easy it was to change. So I think I ended up with my upper tension too light. So I moved it over a couple of holes there. Let's see how this goes. But it's very smooth. It's very smooth. Mm -hmm. Let me get over here where I can show you some of this. Let's see if you'll be able to see some of this. Too bright, huh? There. There's the top stitching. Up on here towards the top by my finger is the longer. The lower stitching is the about 12, 10 to 12. And this middle stitch is the about 20 per inch. But you see on the back, um, over here, Hard to there see that looping, and then I have some dotting. There you can see on the lower where that that uh, needle thread is coming through. So I've reset the needle, the top needle tension on the on the dial as I discussed in the tension videos so I'm going to try that first and if that doesn't fix the problem I'll have to uh, do some adjustment on the bobbin case tension which is unusual but you know it's not my machine this is the first time so somebody could have done it before and uh, adjusted it before too so We'll see. Let's see if I can get some better lighting on this end of the business here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that I, I didn't realize that one light was so yellowish looking. 
this just shows you more of the white light here from the uh, LED how nice that is so let me try this again here and I'll go back to more of a medium stitch about a 12 see how that's looking it's it's definitely making a beautiful top stitch but I'm still getting some that's pulling the the top needle thread down to the bottom so that was at a four. Let me go to a five. They say four to six, so let me go to a five and I'll run another stitch right down next to it. And if I still have the mm-hmm. Yeah, see, I'm still getting, I'm still pulling that top stitch down. But if I put the foot down to put tension on the unit, and if I pull on my needle thread up here, yeah, it's, boy, that's still kind of, kind of light, even at five. Hmm. So let me uh, let me push in that dial again and go over a couple of more uh, put that pin over a couple more mm-hmm all right. This is your last chance, Coco. If you don't make a good seam, a good balance stitch for me now, I'm going to have to play around with your bobbin case. Watch out. All right. All right. Get my tension. There we go. Well, I could almost hear more upper thread tension on that. That was an improvement. That was an improvement. Let me take an old piece of uh, denim here. There's an old double layer of denim that I used for some of my other demos. And let me sew, let me sew on this. Let's see how we come out with our balance stitch. But I'm real happy with the way the machine itself is performing. It's running real smooth. So that's nice. And of course, it, it can sew denim all day long. That's that's no problem for Coco. I don't know. That's kind of dark. I don't know if you'll be able to to see. Yeah, it's a little too dark. I think I'm going to have to move the camera or something here. So there's my red top stitch at about uh, 12. And even through that thicker denim, 
I'm still showing a little bit, just a little bit, of that red thread down here on the bottom. So, definitely going to have to uh, adjust this bobbin case tension. So, let me get my, I think it's a little too tight. Get my tension screwdriver here. And I'll come over here. Maybe let me set this up over on the on the table more instead of on the corner. So I want you to see this. Okay. So there's two uh, two screws on the tension here. This is how I'm, I'm holding the case. There's the little pull-out lever. This is the thread exiting from behind the spring. So as I'm looking at the spring, the screw to the right is what fastens the spring to the case. And the screw on the left is what is adjusted for tension. So since I feel the tension is too strong on this. Uh, I'm looking at, you know, if I put my blade in here, the top of it would be at about 10 o'clock. So I'm going to turn it left to lighten, and I'm going to turn it up to, to 12 o'clock. It's about 12.30. There we go. Now I've got that screw more uh, vertical up and down. And then I'll just hold that and... Yep, that lightened it up a little bit. So, let's put my bobbin case back on the machine. That up. And I pulled that case and pulled my needle thread down. Okay, let's hold on to that and I'll bring that bobbin thread up. Okay. So, let's see. I got something else here. Here's some, here's some fleece. Let me let me sew a, a, a stitch down the side of this, where I can see it good, and see if that helped. If that adjustment helped, so I'm gonna be about a. <laughs> I'm gonna go with about a four on the needle. Uh, thread tension. Press your foot down, stitch about 12. Let's go here and see how this looks. Mm -hmm. Still a pretty, pretty stitch. Okay, now I'm all white on the bottom. I don't have any needle thread be being pulled down by the bobbin thread, so on this fabric it was a more even stitch. Let's go back to my two layers of denim here and see if I can... Well, I'm going to have to run it right down the edge over here. This is getting pretty crowded, huh? <laughs> I use a lot of denim in testing, so I I try and I try and get the most out of it. <laughs> Whenever my wife hems jeans for somebody, I say, "Oh, let me have that. Let me have that." <laughs> okay, let's try this now. 
Um, I think I'll go with about uh, number 10. And I'm going to go a little slower because i got to follow close to that edge there. Sure makes a pretty top stitch. Oh, let's see on the bottom here. Yeah, that's showing up good. Now that's all white. So that's good. I think my adjusting the bobbin from 10 o'clock back to the 12 and just lowering the bobbin spring tension a little bit made a big difference. Let's go back to my thinner, more open weave uh, muslin because that's uh, stitching unbalances show up real good when you when you do a muslin because it's just not a real tight weave or this this particular muslin isn't anyway. Just barely showing like little pink dots at the stitch, but it's nice and tight, it's uniform, so I'm happy with that adjustment. And that's sewing at a four on the needle thread. As a matter of fact, let me go up here and change that to a five and see if I can get rid of those little pink dots. I think I got my thread wrapped around the hook there. Okay. Yeah, even lighter now. See, before I was having definite, uh, you know, even looping and a lot of red thread here on the bottom. And now at five, it's lighter. Yeah, these are better. Okay. Okay. So then I'm going to set up to do some different uh, fabrics here. I feel my stitch is pretty well balanced. Let's sew some more on it and see if I need to tweak it any more. But I'd like to uh, sew some different uh, fabrics now and test the capability of Coco on, on those. So let me gather them up and we'll give it a, a spin. Okay, so now that, now that I've uh, tested just for function and I've got a nice balanced lock stitch, I don't seem to have any uh, timing issues with Coco. Uh, one thing I did notice threading the needle was the needle bar uh, does seem a little um, twisted. It doesn't seem... Um, like the thumb screw is at parallel to the bed line. But it's sewing nice, so I'm not going to worry about it uh, right now. I'm going to be doing a video later about uh, the needle bar, so I'll, I'll double check it then. But uh, one thing I wanted to ask you was, have you ever been told to, you know, hold on to your thread tails when you start sewing? You gotta hold on to the ends of those threads. And uh, I've heard that and I've been told that. And actually this past weekend I was looking at a um, YouTube channel that's you know about sewing and teach, teaching people to sew. And I thought, wow, that's a, that's a great idea. And the person had a video that was like the three biggest mistake beginners make. And the second biggest mistake was they don't hold on to their thread tails. 
and and I'm just really surprised at this because I I've never seen anything in any um, singer manual that says hold on to these thread tails when you start sewing so I, I don't know why that is such a persistent idea I'll tell you what most of the manuals do say and that is that you always begin stitching with your thread take up lever at the highest position because then when you start your needles gonna be uh, you know going down you're starting your stitch and you're not pulling up on the thread and if you if you start in this position where the the take up lever is down see it down here and then like you're gonna start uh, sewing and it's going to be pulling up and if your th thread down here, your needle thread, is not locked into the stitch, it's going to pull that thread right out of the needle. So I think that's where the idea comes from is, you know, you got to hold on to that uh, thread tail there. Whoops, I got them all wrapped up now. <laughs> um, I think that's where the idea comes from. That you, you got to hold on to these guys when you start sewing so that you know and I, I've I've seen that on websites and I've read it in articles and blogs and it's like oh it's gonna get tangled up and stuff but um, not knowing how to sew myself and nobody ever teaching me how to sew when I wanted to test a machine that I was working on I just read the manual you know I'm a I'm a tech guy so I would read the manual and it would say okay you hold on to the needle thread when you bring up the bobbin thread but then it says you, you tuck them under here and you lay them to the back and you're you're, you're kind of done with those thread tails but they all said start up with your take up lever at the highest position and if you do that you don't have to worry about your thread tails in my opinion okay so whatever whatever that's worth I've got a lot of different media here that I'm going to be uh, sewing and it's just to uh, see on different types of fabric I have woven fabric and knit fabric and double knit fabric and uh, fleece and I have the thumb off a leather glove and I have uh, uh, a nylon strap and I have a scrap of leather and this is just kind of my standard uh, thing to do to try and make a fault stitching faults show up so I usually do my number four um, tension on my needle thread and I do about a number 10 or 12 stitch length which I consider to be medium and I just start out with a Kleenex tissue a facial tissue I don't have anything like more delicate than that so that's what I start with and I'll just go feed this uh, polyester through there and I got some knitted stretch fabric and I've got some uh, double knit kind of like a sweater blouse sleeve and I've got my layers of muslin Double layer of fleece, double layer of denim, I've got this uh, gardening leather glove, the thumb, that I stitched before to a uh, nylon strap, so 
So let's see if I can get that under the pressure foot here. There we go. Then I've got my scrap of leather belt. Ta-da! Okay. And that went, that all went well. Uh, the only hesitation was getting that big leather thumb thing under the foot. And so then I'll, I go back and I look at my stitching. And remember, I didn't change tension on anything. I sewed all of this at a number four. So you see that on the a tissue, you see how it's puckered? That's because the tension was a little too high for tissue. Now the top stitch looks great. Look at that. It looks fine. But it's a little puckered here because the tension. This could have been done at a lower tension and a smaller needle. This is just a standard number 14. Something like this I probably should have used an 11 or even a number 9. But it sewed fine. There's my stitching on this uh, thin a polyester blouse material and now the tension is fine uh, for that fabric here is my sewing on some these are like athletic warm-up pant legs my wife shortened and there's my uh, stitching on that it's nice here's the kind of like what I call a sweater blouse she cut the sleeves off of to make a short sleeve double knit and stitching is fine on that it's balanced there's the uh, four layers of muslin I sewed on earlier and uh, there's the two layers of kind of a medium fleece my two layers of denim the leather glove thumb that's on top of a nylon strap that's on top of the leather belt scrap. So you can see that Coco has plenty of power. Uh, it has a smaller amp motor than the 401 or the 500 series. I think the 301 series is about a 0.6 amp motor and the 401 and 500 series are 0.7 amp. You know, but Coco was the first slant needle uh, ever made and it's it's very well designed uh, you know with the gears and the all metal and it's got plenty of power. Uh, it's, a, it's made as a domestic, you know, a home machine but it's very strong and versatile and uh, one of the things that people who buy my vintage machines say they paid that much for new machines at, at uh, sh sewing shops and um, you know Walmart and Best Buy and they can't even hem a pair of jeans which which surprises me but this is a scrap from a pair of jeans my wife hemmed for a friend and it's got the factory hem here um, and I doubled it over to do some of my uh, test sewing so that's that's like a double hem um, I guess so I'll, you know I'll just show you here that it, it doesn't have any uh, problem I mean, if, you, if I can get it under the presser foot, Coco sews just about everything. And I'm going to go down to about a number 10 stitch, almost to a number 8. I'm not going to hold on to my thread tails because my, uh, up, up at the top here, my take-up lever is up high. Let me find the foot pedal here. So I moved it a minute ago. Matter of fact, I'm just going to pull it up and operate by hand. And let me 
definitely go reverse there. Okay. So, you know, you, you, you can see hemming a pair of jeans with a 301 wouldn't be any problem. Uh, I have friends that own these and they, uh, he does upholstery for the cars he restores and the headliners and upholstery and stuff and he has a 301 and a 401 and he, he's used this uh, people have used it for camping equipment hiking equipment I, I don't know about sails on a sailing ship I think it could sew it but you know um, I think a sail ride or an industrial machine would be would be better but um, I'm, I'm satisfied with the uh, performance of the... Hey, I wonder, wonder if I could get that underneath there. Just kind of for the heck of it. Wow. How about that? I don't know. That's the leather scrap and two layers of denim. I don't know if I should start the needle down in... Um, yeah, I'll just try it here. Let's see what happens. Whoops, I'm in reverse. <laughs> Whoops. Yep, okay. All right, how do you like that? Even right, right to the end there. <laughs> These old vintage machines always just surprise me with their versatility. Mm-hmm. So there was it's a pretty stitch too, isn't it? So there was the the scrap lever, two layers of denim, and then a layer a layer of the nylon in between. But nylon uh these these vintage machines will sew that nylon strapping just like it's butter. Okay. So there's taking Coco for a spin, and, and I'm very happy with her. Um, like I said, I don't know the needle, but the timing's good. I feel I have the, the tension on the upper unit and the bobbin uh, dialed in pretty good there. I'll do a little more testing. I always do, you know, but just to... Uh, uh, the way it's sitting right now, I'm pretty pretty darn happy with her. And because uh, um, we're closing in on being finished with the standard rehabilitation of a vintage machine. Thanks for tuning in. Hope to see you next time. Take care. Doing a good job today, Coco.